Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us uh, for our first video of 2020. As you can see, our format is going to be a little bit different this year. We're going to be focusing on more open conversations around particular subjects, and uh, we'll also be answering some questions from you guys along the way. So we do hope you enjoy this new format. Here today with me, I've got Chris and I've got John. These are two guys who've been on the team for a very long time. They've been playing Airsoft for over 10 years each. Uh, and what we're going to be talking about today is something we talk about in almost all of our videos, which is movement. Um, and we're going to start it off by getting into the, uh, this idea that, you know, you can't move without risking the possibility of getting shot. Mm -hmm. But you also can't win most of the games that you're playing without actually moving. So there's this paradox that, that exists with movement. Um, and so I'd like to just start off, I guess, with Chris talking about how you've experienced that um, in your career going through Airsoft. Uh, yeah, definitely. I guess like, um, you know, you start off and you're, you're afraid to get hit by BBs or, or whatnot. And uh, the only really way to get over that, I guess, is to uh, just start moving on the field. You got to uh, pick apart what more experienced players are doing or what guys who, you know, seem to be successful are doing. So if they're moving to different pieces of cover to get different angles, try and emulate that. Uh, make some mistakes. It's just a game. So like I said, the only way to get experience is to do it. So I'd say just just start moving. For sure. And I know, John, like you enjoy working with you know newer players, people who are just sort of getting their feet wet into the game. How do you work with newer players to get them moving when they're the ones who might still be afraid of getting hit and stuff like that? Uh, well, I think the simplest approach to like teaching newer players of what to do on the field is don't tell them to do something without that's something you're not going to do yourself. So kind of take the initiative, say like, I, hey, bud, I want you to cover me while I move forward. Uh, and just te ingrain that uh, fundamental skill of covering while someone else moves right from the get-go. So once you have that solid base of fire movement, then you can you kind of open their eyes to the possibilities that, well, maybe if I'm going to move, I should have someone covering me and vice versa. Right, and that, and that's fair. I think you know we see a lot in you know TV and movies and stuff like you know those the. the the typical, stereotypical grizzle drill sergeant or whatever, who's yelling and shouting at people. And so I, you know, we see that a lot emulated in Airsoft too, where guys are just yelling at other people. But that doesn't seem to work really well with newer players, like in general. I guess people don't like being yelled at, which, exactly. you know, kind of makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, how do you, in a situation where, you know, it is important for them to do that, how do you get them to do stuff without actually like yelling at them to do it? Well, from the onset of the game, when we, the teams are assigned, First thing I usually do is kind of get everyone's name, just make myself approachable, say like, well, I'm John, uh, what's your name and what's your name? And I'm going to pick out a little fire team that I know I can move with um, from these younger players and say like, okay, uh, well, we're going to be a, a squad. Make sure you use these kind of big words saying like, we're going to be like squad, we're going to be like Navy SEALs and all this stuff, like operator and all that. So they, they know that like they're, they're fulfilling their fantasy of being the, the Call of Duty soldier in the real life. Because, um, I mean, that's what, that's, let's get real here, that's, that's what drove most of us to play in Airsoft, is mm. through movies and video games. Sure, yeah. So if they can fulfill the, that fantasy of being a soldier, then all the better to them. So you got to make it so that they're the hero in their movie. So that's what at least I found. It's just learning their names, being respectful, not asking too much of them, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they're, they're new players. They need, yeah. they need to, you, they, you need to make the first example. And I know, you know, a lot of the guys who watch our channel, I mean, will probably be also watching other kinds of content, like, you know, I think about like T-Rex arms or Grand Thumb and stuff. Mm. And they watch those guys running courses of fire. And, you know, as a sort of, a you know, a, a player who's been doing this for a while, you expect that the way that they're moving through their courses of fire, that's the way that you should move yourself when you're on the airsoft field if you're moving CQC. You know, you're moving extremely fast, you're shooting at targets extremely fast, transitioning targets really fast. Um, so... You know, is that the kind of movement that airsofters should be looking to emulate on the field, according to you? Uh, I don't think so, totally. Like, there is a time and a place for aggressive movements and that kind of thing. And I think the, you know, a, a good way to sort of shift the initiative your way is to be aggressive. But the thing you got to realize is that, uh, A, we're playing airsoft. It's not the real thing. So don't necessarily emulate tactics that the professionals or the people shooting real guns are, are, are doing because... Uh, if somebody gets shot with a real gun, they're either incapacitated or, you know, they're taking it, right? So in Airsoft, that's not the case, and it's just a game. So if I come around a corner really fast and I see you, we might shoot each other, right? So then I'm taken out, 
you're taking out, then it's, you know, a draw. Or we're both going to overshoot each other then argue about it. Right? right, yeah. So, I mean, that happens all the time because, uh, you know, you might not feel the BB, the, you know, your adrenaline's pumping, all this kind of stuff. So I think that there's a lot of lessons to be learned from videos like that, but you've got to scale it back and uh, think about it in, in terms of airsoft. That's fair. And, and in terms of airsoft especially, like I read a lot of, oh, I've read a lot of posts of people saying, well, how do I stop being afraid of getting hit, right? That's mm. that's a common thing that I've read. And generally people will be sort of dismissive and say, I, you know, just get experience and you'll be fine. But I think, and I, I think there's certainly some truth to that, but there's also the fact that, you know, if you're afraid of getting hit or you're afraid of taking your corner or whatever, it's likely part of it is that you're not sure that you're, not sure that you're able to do what you're going to need to do when you come around that corner. Mm -hmm. So in terms of sort of training for themselves and working through it themselves, what are some things that, you know, players could think about in order to maximize their own confidence and their skills? Well, I'd say it's all about um, mastering all the basics. So if you know that you can mount your rifle correctly, if you can efficiently get on target, if you can efficiently reload, if you can uh, move correctly, like, you know, you're not uh, showing 90% of your body when you come around a corner, that, that kind of thing. Uh, if you can mount a cover correctly and, and use it to your advantage, then the chances of you getting hit, especially like 90% of the time I get hit in the helmet or in the arm or something like that, very rarely get hit like straight up because I'm limiting the amount of myself that's available to be hit. Right? right. So I'm not necessarily worried about taking some, you know, shots to more vital areas or areas that are going to hurt mm -hmm. besides my face. <laughs> but uh, because I'm limiting that. So if you practice that kind of stuff, uh, then I think you'll you'll be in a much better position. And what about like in terms of mindset? So I know like I think about you, Johnny, in particular, over the last several years, you're definitely your, your speed and your aggressiveness have definitely gone up, right? We see you move on the field a lot more, a lot more aggressively, sometimes maybe a little too much. That's another conversation. <laughs> but what has changed sort of in your mindset that enabled you to sort of push past that and start being as aggressive as you needed to be? The simplest answer is getting shot in the face is the worst place you can get shot. I know that firsthand as many other people do. But um, for the newer players, especially, like there's there's ways to protect your face. I see a lot of kids running with lower face mask and protection like that. But for me, I found it's it doesn't get as bad as what I've already received. I mean, mm -hmm. it could get worse. I could lose a tooth, but like, I mean, a BB to the chin is not that bad. So it's just like um, then you can just laugh about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I find just taking taking the reality of the situation, and I know I'm comfortable with my own skill set. Um, that I can outperform people that have not put in the hours that I put in. Um, and I'm comfortable with my weapon, so I know how to get the drop on people. I have the range to get the drop on people. So I'm, I'm confident in the ability of my rifle, of my skill set, to kind of overcome those barriers. And if I get hit, I get hit. It's no big deal. It's not the real thing. Right. And do you, you know, do you spend some time considering sort of how things worked out for you on the field when you try stuff? Like, how important is that in terms of your sort of development? Um, definitely. Um, I find a little after action report, um, is what is kind of mandatory, I think, with progression. If you're not asking yourself what worked and what didn't work after an action, then you're really not learning anything from that, mm -hmm. that experience. And that's where, uh, like we mentioned before, uh, being very proficient in the fundamentals, so not worrying about if you got to reload, not worrying about how you're going to take a cover or, or what's the best way to move from this cover, all that kind of stuff, or your comms. Like, if every time you got to talk on the radio, it's a whole deal where you got to move your rifle, hit it, think about what you're going to, like, all that kind of stuff. If you can, if you're proficient enough that you don't have to think about all that kind of, all that stuff, then it makes it a lot easier to think about what you're actually doing on mm -hmm. the airsoft field, right? For sure. So every time we come up to a situation, you know, if you're not thinking about, okay, I need to take my rifle down or I need to do this or that, then as you come up, you can say, oh, what's the best piece of cover? Uh, where do I think the enemy's going to be? Where are my guys? All this, you know, that sort of train of thought. And so what's the best way for someone to build sort of that sort of muscle memory, for lack of a better term? Uh, for the fundamentals yeah yeah so just definitely reps so try and um, try and get as perfect as you think uh, a, an action could be so try and perfect your reload very slowly go through all the steps then eventually add speed so the same as if you're if you're just practicing uh, doing ready ups like we've shown on videos you know do it really slowly get a nice position on your shoulder make sure everything lines up as well as you can and then start applying the speed 
don't just try and go really fast right away because it looks cool. Mm -hmm. Because if you try and do it really fast and you overshoot your target and then they hit you, well, then it doesn't matter how fast you got up because you missed. Right. right? Yeah. Same with a reload. If, if most people took, you know, slow down by a second, then you're guaranteed to complete your reload without fumbling or, or whatnot. It's that old saying, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think we'll just take a quick break here and answer a question that one of our viewers left on one of our other videos. Uh, user Lamborghini Names asked us the question about whether we upgrade our guns or if we shoot really fast. And I think, you know, the guys will agree. I mean, it's a little bit of both. Like we put some basic upgrades in our guns. Um, and I'm not a gun tech myself, but I mean, we put stuff like uh, electronic trigger controls, like a BTC Spectre MOSFET or, you know, Gate Titan's another good option. We do high speed gears and, you know, a, you know, barrel with an R hop, that kind of stuff. Good motor. A good motor. Yeah, for sure. And all of those upgrades really are focused on bringing up our consistency of our, of our shooting, but they also give us really good trigger control. I think, Chris, I think you'd be good to talk about sort of the importance <clears throat> of the really good trigger response and volume of fire. Definitely. So... It may seem like in a lot of our videos we're using full auto, but almost none of us on the team ever use full auto. We always use semi. So we like to use semi because we can we have full control over every BB uh, and we can shoot as fast as we want. So I can immediately ramp up my fire if I need to or bring it back down. So an instance that I'll use is if I'm approaching um, an enemy behind a piece of cover, I can hit the cover every second or like pop pop, pop to keep them down. And then soon as I uh, get around that cover or I see them, I can increase my fire to hit them. So I can pop, 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 keep them in and then pop, 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 get them. Yeah. And you, you touched about it there. And I think we've talked about this as well before, but like being able to maintain that volume of fire is what lets people move around the field. Yeah, too, definitely. Right. So when you're working with, especially like newer players, like how do you get them to shoot at a rate that's makes sense, you know, for you in terms of providing fire? Like what do you recommend for them? Um, if I see people on the field and they're, you know, they're rocking full auto and they're not really aiming or anything, I'm, I go up to them and say like, hey bud, you're not, you're just, you're not doing anyone any favors here. You're wasting ammo and, you know, you're going to be out of the game faster because of it. Um, so why don't you put on semi and, you know, take, take a moment, shoulder your weapon properly and like engage the target that all, if there's a contact at our 12 o'clock, I'll call out that target and say like, put some rounds down on him. I'm going to move forward. It's so they can understand that. Fully automatic is not like the best option. Uh, there's other options that will keep you in the game longer. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, if you have like two magazines uh, to like make caps or whatever, and you want to you want to maintain that fire, you want to stay in the fight as long as you possibly can. Yeah. If you're using like an MP5 and you have two mags, and there's no one on the team that has an MP5 with magazines available, you're kind of up the creek, so to speak. Yeah. So that's kind of like why we as a team and we kind of encourage people to use it like an m4 ar15 kind of platform so we can all share ammo yeah and if if kids on the field are dumping mags i'll pop one of them and they're using an ar i can i can toss them a mag if need be for sure definitely and I think, too, like, you know, there's a lot of, it, it can certainly be a lot of fun to shoot full auto, but especially when you're just getting into it for yeah. the first time. But once you've been playing for a really long time and you've experienced full auto and, you know, that the thrill sort of that is gone, you'll, yeah. I think most of the people will agree that semi-automatic is much more controlled and much more and effective in the long term. The safety as well, especially with new players. I mean, I've been hit a number of times where one or two BBs would have been sufficient, yeah. but because they pull the trigger on full auto, I get... 10 or 15. Yeah. I mean, our upgraded rifles, I think the last time I checked, it was like 25 rounds a second. And that's slow compared to, to some guys. Some guys are getting 50 rounds a second. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, like, who needs 50 rounds a second, you know, for, for most engagements? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, of course, if you're, you know, playing speed soft and all this kind of stuff, like, you know, we said it before, yeah. don't listen to anything we say if you're doing speed soft. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for our applications, for sure, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely better to keep that rate of fire lower. And kind of piggyback off that point. Why spend 50 BBs when like maybe 10 would do the trick? For yeah, sure. Definitely. Yeah. So thanks so much for the question and Lamborghini names. Uh, for our other viewers, please make sure if you have some questions you'd like us to answer on video, make sure to leave them in the comment section. So, you know, coming off of this conversation, though, I think it's a good time to talk about uh, movement with other people. So we've talked about sort of our individual movement uh, and how, you know, how it sort of goes on the field. But how does this you know, and you talked about it a little bit too. How does it change when you're working with other people? And here I'm not necessarily talking about people who've never played before, or like newbies, but yeah. you know, you're working with someone who's an experienced player. How do you, you know, how do you move with them on the field? Like, what are the important considerations? 
Well, I think you definitely, you got to keep it simple. Uh, there's no need, if you're playing with people, even you people you play with casually, if you haven't practiced uh, movement, it's really hard to do a complex you know, series of movements. So just keep it as simple as I fire, you move, or uh, like that. And then also just maybe take it a little slow. Like there's no reason. A lot of times, I mean, initiative aside, there's no real reason to uh, fly into an engagement. So you can sort of take it a little slow, get to know each other a little bit, and then, then move in. Fair enough. And so, John, why don't you tell us a little bit about sort of your thought process? So you're in cover with someone uh, and you're trying to make movement across the field. How do you decide with another person? How do you coordinate like how far you're going to go, which piece of cover you're going to go to? Um, it's super simple in my mind. Situational awareness is key. If you don't have situational awareness, you don't know what's going on. So you need communication and you need visuals. And those are the two overlining principles, I believe, that you need to get a basic understanding of the situation that you're facing. So if I'm moving with some person I've played with a few few times, uh, it's going to be, I'm going to ask him first, what do you see? And I'm going to ask where he is in relation to what he sees. He says, I see a contact nine o'clock. All right, put some fire down. I'm going to move two pieces of cover forward. So uh, if he if he thinks that's a good idea, then, and I hear rounds going down range, I'm going to think it's a good idea as well and move uh, based off what I see before I make that move. And then when I'm set, I'm gonna put some rounds down on that same target, and then I'm gonna assess the situation. So it's gonna be scanning. Uh, usually the rifle will be up and most, of, most often, but sometimes you'll peer over the, the cover or whatever you're using, and just trying to get that fundamental situation. Um, so then once you assess the situation, you can call to him, say like, all right, move to me or move to my right, move to my left, wherever, wherever he is in relation to you. Um, it's, I think that's the overlying principle of how to um, take it slow, but be effective. Fair enough. And so what, what happens? So you're working with someone and you decide that you're going to make movement to another piece of cover. You, you're going to cover them. They go, they peel out of the piece of cover. They start running. They hit immediately. Now you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. Now what? So, I mean, again, it's just going to be situational. And um, <clears throat> really, you've got to decide if you're going to make a difference by uh, moving up yourself, depending on the game type, or are you going to be in a better position to stay where you are, wait for another uh, teammate or, or whatnot to, to catch up with you, uh, or if you should just peel back and, and regroup, right? So, again, it's all situational. And to sort of talk about what, what John was saying is that um, – especially when you're working with people who are a little newer or you're not familiar with, people always think you got to move forward, forward. Like you can move to the side, you can peel back, you know, d depending on your situation, like you don't have to keep hammering forward. So maybe uh, if, you're, if your guy gets hit right away, well, you know that that avenue is not, not you know, a, a safe way to move. So maybe you will decide to uh, move in a different direction, try right. and get a different angle. Fair enough, yeah. Okay, well, I think, so we, we covered a lot of ground here today. We talked about sort of the importance of moving in general and sort of, you know, the kinds of skills that people need to be working on for themselves. I think one of the big things is if you're not comfortable in your own skills, you won't be, you know, you'll be afraid to make movement, right? Definitely. And I know for some of us, you know, it's been a long time since we've been afraid to get hit, but that mm -hmm. still sometimes happens, right? No, oh, yeah. That's just, it's part of the game. We talked about how it's important to just remind yourself that it's a game sometimes and Definitely. say, you know what, I'm going to try something and see if it works, but always have the conversation with yourself after to say, how did that go? Yeah. What could have gone differently? And then finally, we talked, you know, about how coordination with other people is critical, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can't, to your point, situational awareness is key. We can't do anything on the field if we don't know uh, where our teammates are, where the enemy is, like all those kinds of decisions. And then once we decide what we're going to do based on the situation, you know, make sure we're coordinating and communicating as much as possible. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, you know, I hope you like this new format. Please let us know in the comments if you enjoy this format. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you see, make sure to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.